Hello, and thanks for joining the Frosty Sith channel today for this third episode of the Garden Tour for 2022. So let's dive in, let's take a look and see how things are going. All right, so we're going to start here kind of in the middle of the main garden, and you can see a number of things right off the bat. First off, we have harvested all of the hard neck and the soft neck garlic. We had 160 hard neck plants right in here, and uh, we've harvested all those. Those have been curing for two weeks, and it's been extremely hot here. Um, today it's going to be 105 right now. It's the middle of July, and it's uh, 9... 30 in the morning and it's 90 degrees. So um, we've been giving a little bit of water to things just to make sure when they wilt real hard that uh, they get some support in the evenings. We've got pimentos coming on, they're doing good. We've got some other habanadas starting to come on there. Uh, basil needs to be harvested again. It's starting to go to seed, just can't stay on top of it. It just likes to go. Um, the peach cherapita is doing real well for the heat level. Got hundreds and hundreds of little peppers on it. And uh, it is in a pot and it does get stressed quite a bit more. So I have to stay on top of these potted plants um, just to keep them from not being overly stressed. And I've talked before about this carbon tomato. We had some pretty good wind yesterday and uh, had some of the tomatoes that are loaded, carbon vines loaded with tomatoes fall over. And I was gonna retrellis those, but they're loaded with tomatoes. So I think we're gonna harvest, and I'm gonna come back here shortly, and we're gonna harvest a bunch of these monster tomatoes if you follow us on Instagram, these are the carbon variety of tomatoes, and they have been our absolute best producer. These tomatoes are huge, and they get a little stretch marks because we're watering them, but I mean, that is way bigger than my hand. That's gonna be bigger than a two pound tomato right there, and a lot of these other ones are gonna be close to two pounds. This carbon variety is a green-shouldered uh, tomato. And so these are actually ready to harvest, maybe a day or so behind harvesting. But, and when you cut them open, they have kind of a green gel, especially near the shoulder area, which makes them a little darker. So these are described as a purple type tomato. Um, ours haven't been that purple or that dark. Uh, they actually are, you know, more of a pink with, uh, the darker green gel in there. So they're just delicious. We've been loving them and uh, just need to keep producing this. And I've talked about this before too, Pruden's Purple or Pruden's Pride. Um, you know, this is probably the biggest tomato that we have on it and they are super slow, slow to grow, slow to ripe. We don't have a single ripe tomato and I've already harvested like four pounds off the carbon and we've been eating those. The cherry tomatoes are prolific. We're still eating carrots. I need to get these cleaned out soon and uh, processed for storage so we can do more winter <clears throat> harvesting. Still eating on the beets. The cherry tomatoes, of course, are just doing wonderful. I don't know how well you can see that, but I mean, there's just, it's hard to stay on top of the cherry tomatoes. And uh, we do have some pear tomatoes, red. They're actually called, I think, chocolate pear is what that's called. And they're really yummy. So tomato season this year has just been, you know, excellent. Um, just really great. Just got to stay on top of the pruning. I need to prune some more. You can tell there's some wind damage with vines broken over and I cut off about another 12 feet of vines off the purple, uh, the Prudence purple uh, a couple of days ago. And you can see there's some broken stuff from wind damage. So I still need to do some more pruning there. But all in all, the tomatoes are doing great. Um, 
So let's turn around here. And this is the crookneck squash. It's doing well and has also acted because we did it in pots this year. It is harder to keep it watered sufficiently with this heat. And we're supposed to have another week of 105, 106 temperatures. But if I keep it watered, it's not too stressed. It does produce fruit. And it also has been a great almost trap crop for the squash bugs because it's lifted up off the ground, uh, the height of the pot. You know, it's easier to look under the bottom of the leaves and to catch the squash bugs and get rid of them, uh, both on this potted crookneck squash and the zucchini we'll look at here in a bit. So we may get bigger pots next year, but uh, we'll probably still do these that way. Um, more basil. We got some cucumbers we'll let mature for seed. These are picklers, and we've been pickle, uh, harvesting cucumbers uh, daily and starting to work on the gherkin stock right now. And there's, let me see, that needs to be harvested today. And there's just lots and lots of little cucumbers. So they're doing really well and uh, we'll harvest those after the video. And we've already got two gallons of pickle stock to go. Uh, over here to my left, we've got two North Georgia candy roaster plants that are planted in that compost pile from seed. And the butternuts, which we had two plants planted over here, have kind of made their way and interspersed with the North Georgia candy roaster. But uh, we're getting fruits set on the North Georgia candy roaster. There's one right there. There's one over there. And there's a lot more in here. So I'm excited about that. Um, that may be the current biggest one that we have, but these things can get a few feet tall and uh, they are obviously stressed by the heat, uh, but I think they've got plenty of water. The butternut squash is doing good. It's putting on ample fruits for our needs. Um, this pepper plant is just now starting to make flowers. And um, so I haven't seen, I don't think there's any peppers on this one yet. Um, so we'll have to wait to get some of those. The sweet potatoes are looking excellent and they love the heat. Uh, need to finish harvesting potatoes on the backside too. Got a red potato on the outer edge and then uh, just like a russet type in the middle. And uh, I've got to come through here and I still haven't seen any beans, which is annoying. I don't know if we've got grasshoppers or something that are eating all the little tender buds or what's going on. Um, but we'll see because uh, I haven't seen lima beans and just a couple weeks ago, planted a succession planting of 1500 year old cave beans. Um, the slicers are doing just as well as the picklers and we've harvested, I don't know, 20 pounds so far probably of slicers. There's one that's getting there. So, They're nice, these are good. Market more is what that is. And then the picklers is the burpee pickler is originally, they're from Save Seed. And then we've got this rainforest pepper. We ate the first one of these peppers last week and you can see, you know, it's really putting the peppers on. This one's not quite ripe, that orange one that you see there. It'll get a bright fire engine red. And these are supposed to be somewhere between twice as hot and 10 times as hot as a jalapeno. Uh, so they can be, you know, warm, but I thought it was really good, had a great fruity flavor. And so I'm excited that these are putting on so many peppers. And look, we've got a whole bunch of flowers there too. Before we move on, dang it, it looks like the wind broke one of my tassels there on the corn plant, the top off. They were getting really tall. So they're Maybe not quite 12 feet, but yeah, that's not good. Broke it right out of the top where there's a making silks on a couple of cobs. So 
That sucks. Oh well. And now that the silks are showing on some of these, we gotta get, yeah, see that one's actually, you know, making pollen and uh, it's been over too. So I don't know if that's the heat or what. Anyway, the corn's doing good, but we gotta start spraying the silks with uh, some spinosad or something to keep the corn earworms down. The amaranth that we planted thickly, it's doing fine. The stalks are a little skinny, but we're not eating the stalks. We're after the grain head that comes on the top later. So I, I just think these have been a pleasant surprise and have worked out great. They look great and add, uh, I think, a little bit of color to the garden. So that's super. No peppers on this plant yet. I don't think I've even seen it flower. Oh, there's a flower. So it'll get there eventually. And again, more of the tomatoes. And you can see, even though I cut 12 foot off of here just a few days ago, uh, the wind has blown these down. They got up well over 10 foot tall. And uh, I gotta come out here and do some pruning. Um, Brussels sprouts are coming along. This is probably the best we've ever done so far with Brussels sprouts here. And they still have a long way to go but uh, they're getting there. So kale hanging in there. This is the zucchini and we have been harvesting zucchinis off this and this one is ready to grill up. This is the perfect size, you know, for grilling. Just cut it in half, throw it on the grill. And uh, so that's great, but same song, second dance there, keeping that water just difficult. These volunteer cantaloupes are doing great. Uh, we're just cutting off the tip leaders at this point. We got plenty and wrapping them around there. The Tabasco pepper is doing good. It's flowering, it's putting on fruit and just trying to keep it warm. Need to harvest more of the bunching onions. Uh, this one is just starting to set some fruit on it and so and again it's in a pot and requires much more diligent watering and fertilizing um, because it's potted versus in the ground the rest of these peppers are all doing good the petunias and calendula are doing great this is the other side of uh, the carbon tomatoes <laughs> and i don't know how well the camera's picking up all those tomatoes and how big they are but those are some big big tomatoes. I've never grown tomatoes this big. Um, so we're loving that variety. And uh, then this one, same thing. I think it's just starting to put on flowers here. And uh, this is a seven pot yellow, seven pot primo. And it hasn't, hasn't set fruit yet, but it will. And we've got a bunch of other peppers here that are flowering and just starting to make some fruit, it looks like. So they probably could use a little water, but everything's doing good here. The dill harvest this year has been great. We've got plenty of dill for cucumbers. Uh, the onions, these are the best onions we've ever grown here. And we started these from seed in the late winter and then put them out in the late spring and they've bulbed up and done really well so got some leeks which is the first time we've grown leeks and they're doing great and so let's move over got the chicago hardy fig is doing really well uh planted it this spring and uh, it's just really taken off it's probably two or three times the size that it was when we planted it. And in this bed, this is kind of our hodgepodge bed and we've got a couple of experiments going on here. We've got the ginger, which I thought had died uh, in the spring, but obviously it's, hopefully it's making some rhizomes and we'll get some ginger this fall. We also have a couple of peanut plants right here and over here. And 
you know, I, I spent some mubuku bucks uh, on this peanut seed, Valencia peanut seed, but uh, only got a 5% germination rate. So I was really disappointed in that. So hopefully we'll get enough peanuts for actual seed stock for next year. And then a week ago, I planted these three, and these are a small watermelon, like a per, they won't get larger than four or five pounds. Um, three watermelon seeds in here uh, to go on this little trellis. We've got uh, the blueberry bushes are settling in. They were pretty stressed right after planting and had some leaf browning. This amaranth over here is still this red Hopi amaranth, but it was single seed planted and uh, it's much more wind resistant. It's just much stockier and uh, robust plant when it's not planted densely. Volunteer sunflower, some white amaranth over there and the okra, which is already starting to make pods. In fact, that one looks like it just grew overnight. And uh, I need to come out here and get this. The nice thing about this particular variety, and I've been saving seed now for like three years, is these can get pretty long. And see, this is still, as big as this is, this is still very edible. It's very soft. It's not hard. So I need to come out with the clippers really and get that so I'll come back and get that with the clippers but there we go and then we've got more coming on here so and the one thing different that we did this year with the okra is we didn't put it into a highly amended raised bed with lots of nitrogen so this is just the native clay soil with no fertilizer or anything and they have started producing at a much shorter height, which is what I was wanting. And so instead of five or six foot, you know, these are now, they started flowering at about 18 inches and now they're almost three feet, the tallest ones, three foot tall. Then there's the corn, as I mentioned, and it's just monstrous, that's white Cherokee. Let's move over here. So chocolate cherry sunflower, uh, did some succession planning, so maybe we'll have some red sunflowers come up and snack mix come up. Uh, got these volunteer cantaloupes coming back, and I'll show you some cantaloupes here in a minute. Um, we did plant from seed a week or so ago um, some pink jazz tomatoes, and I'm not sure the others made it through the heat, but I've already thinned this one. There were two seeds planted there, and I think that one's going to make it, and that'll be interesting to see if we get some pink jazz tomatoes by the end of the season. The Zapotec red jalapenos are doing great. We've been harvesting those already. Um, the orange spice jalapenos are starting to produce as well. And as I mentioned, we've got cantaloupes that are already fruiting. So everything over here is doing good. We did harvest the coriander, freeze-dried some uh, mature green coriander for uh, using in the kitchen. And we've got this much more, so tens of thousands of seeds drying to actually harvest. And then the rest of them we just used as a coarse mulch. And you can see they've got, you know, mature seeds on them, but that's fine because we love coriander, so cilantro. So that's great. There's some of these cantaloupe fruit, so they're doing good. And I don't think these, any of these on the front have any fruit on them yet. Oh, well looky there. There's one, and I think that's a scotch bonnet. So, hoorah, great. So we also secession planted some other things. I think we've got a patty pan that we put in here where the soft neck garlic was and some other flowers I don't even remember. And we've got a second round of sunflowers going all along the fence there. Hopefully it's not too hot for them to germinate. And then our first round of sunflowers, they're all starting to pop now. And we've got chocolate cherry and a yellow variety we've been growing for a couple of years from Save Seed. 
and the zinnias are just marvelous and I planted a few extra zinnias in here I also planted some cosmos I think we planted double cherry zinnias either here or here and then cosmos in in one of the spots as well so coming over to the sort of the herb pollinator garden which has been really great we have planted some extra little seeds in here we'll see if those come up it's been really hard to keep the soil mo moist, but everything's doing good here. The thyme, which is kind of shaded by the zinnias right now, is really taking off and creeping around, which is what I wanted it to do. Uh, we've got some bulbs coming up there. Sage is doing fine. That one's looking pretty stressed. Uh, the oregano is continues to do well. And then you can see some of the those little uh, seedlings coming up in the back there the green ones down on the ground and that's another round of zinnias to kind of fill in the gap we've got a number of those around and then we've got and i think these are some viola seedlings i planted a number of things here so i'm not sure about that and then we've got some other uh, seedlings that we planted succession planted here and we planted some viola seeds around this rock. We'll see if they come up. It has been super hard to keep the soil moist um, without heavily top mulching it. And we're trying to plant seeds, so I don't want to do that. Uh, this garden's doing great. The Reliance Grapevine, we've been trying to keep it pruned and train it up. And it's just growing wonderfully. We need to get in here and do some more weeding, but everything's just looking great. So, no complaints there. Well, I think that's going to kind of wrap it up for this episode three. Let's move over and take a look at the brown turkey fig. All right, so this is where we brought back um, a root from a brown turkey fig from Georgia. And I thought it was completely dead, but late in the spring, it started to sprout out at the bottom. And so it may be a foot tall now. The issue is, <clears throat> I don't think it's going to make it through our winters here, that this wood is going to make it, which means it's going to be regrowing from the crown every year. And so I'm probably going to maybe move this to a pot, maybe, and then plant a Desert King here instead which will definitely work for our hardiness zone and uh, that's it so other than that we've got more seeds to sow yet for the fall garden and we got to do some of that cleanup work and do some mulching so that's wraps up episode three of uh, the garden tour uh, if you want a little extra content, you might want to follow us on Instagram at Frosty Sith. Uh, we post a few things there uh, pretty frequently. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more backpacking, gardening, preserving, you know, kind of whatever we're doing in life. <laughs> video content, and uh, we'll go from there. But remember... No matter how hot it is or cold it is, whenever you can, get up, get out, live a little. See ya. So, let's get these into some pint jars and sealed up. Lots of cilantro coriander flavor there.